Hey up troops, it's a little tin here again with another video and this time we're gonna be What a way to make an entrance This time we're gonna be looking at that guy Sledge Sledge is such a good operator in Siege and is great for all levels of play You see him played in Pro League and he's a really good operator to learn how to play the game with as well I don't say this in every video, but if you do like the videos, please do me a favor subscribe to the channel in the next couple of months or so, I'm hoping we're going to hit the big 10k. So if you sub and you get involved with that, then thank you. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it makes me day. Cheers. And as always, that's enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. Right then, let's start with Sledge's loadout then. And I think this might be the quickest loadout that we're ever going to do. So you've got the M590A1, you've got the L85, you've got the pistol, the grenades and flashes. I can be very quick with this. You know my thoughts on shotguns. This shotgun is actually one of the shotguns that I don't mind. But I can't see a reason why you're ever going to be running a, a sledge shotgun loadout personally. But for me, L85. Now, scopes, there's, this is a conversation to have whether you run 1.5 ACOG or the one times options. I run 1.5. It's probably my favorite scope overall. I think it's really nice. From 1.5 and flash. Um, pistol, we've got to use. And then grenades or, or flashes. The sledge is just synonymous with grenades, isn't it? So it's the quickest one we'll do. L85, pistol, grenades. It, it, I just don't think there's, there's anything else worth talking about on that. Well, I think we should get this started by doing the obvious. Let's shoot the radio. So what does Sledge's utility do then? Sledge has access to this thing, which is the Kraber hammer. And you'll see one press of the gadget button winds up a big swing of the old hammer here and swings it. Now, what does the hammer do? It can destroy anything that's soft, essentially. So if you've got soft walls like this here, got a barricade like this here, or hatches or soft floor like this, and a hatch like this. It's going to be able to destroy those or make holes in those. So, starting with the walls. One swing of the hammer at waist or normal height will do this to the wall. As you can see, it makes a sort of... It's essentially a sort of mini instant breaching charge. Again, it's the same with the floor. You'll see that it's the same size roughly as well. And again, with a, with a barricade. Destroy barricades in one hit. That includes the glass, if there's any glass on the barricade as well. And exactly the same with hatches. One hit on a hatch, and it's gone as well. Just a quick one here, by the way. Because we've just opened this hatch, you might be able to hear the jukebox now. I'm sad enough to have learnt the vertical play for jukeboxes. That's right here. Shoot the jukebox as well. Now, as you can probably see on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there's a meter for how many times you can swing that sledge craver. As you can see, we've used a few uses there, and the number you can use it is 25 times. Now, as we start using the hammer, you'll see that after every use, it dips down a tad there. And you get 25 swings of the hammer. Now, in a realistic match, you're going to have to really go out your way to, to use that hammer more than 25 times. I've never ran out of it in a real-life scenario um, in a game, whether that's casual, ranked, or whatever. I've never ran out of uses of the hammer. Um, you know, realistically, you're probably going to be using it 10 or 12 times, I would say, in a round. So if you're using it 25, um, you're making some serious destruction to the map. So that there is the is the sort of top and bottom of Sledge's hammer. However, there is a bit of sort of mastery to it because there are a few things you can do to benefit yourself. As you saw, if we try to go through a wall here, if you just walk up and sledge the wall, you can see it makes a hole in the wall, but I can't go through that. So I've got to do another animation to get through that hole. However, if you crouch as you go up to the wall and swing your hammer, you'll be able to go through the wall straight away. So you can instantly walk through. You can see the difference there. If you swing sort of... Normal height, head height, chest height. You can't walk through the wall. You're going to have to vault over, which is not the best thing to do in Siege because you want to try and keep your crosshair head height, which is roughly about here on this door frame. If I have to vault through this door and I want to be aiming head height, watch what happens to the crosshair. As you can see, it goes up and it goes down and it moves. However, if we're going through here, we want to keep it head height. There's absolutely no change to it at all. We can keep it head height. So you want to try and reduce the amount of times you vault if you can. Now, one of the main reasons for playing Sledge is not just to open up rotates through walls like we were just doing upstairs, like this into the bar. It's for vertical play. Sledge is probably the best... Well, I say probably. He's definitely the best operator in the game when it comes to vertical play. It's so easy to make holes in the floor. And something that you're going to learn to make you a better Sledge player is your map knowledge. As soon as you know where defenders typically hold below here in... Uh on clubhouse and basements, if you know they're going to be holding back Arsenal and you know you need to open this area to clear them out of there... You're going to be a better player and a better sledge really quickly. But yeah, the main reason you're going to be playing him is to make these holes. And you're going to learn on different maps where it is you want to make these holes and why. This one's always a good one here. Try and make it a bit further over. That's not over. 
Uh, you can now hold the door that comes out of church. The moto, obviously, it's a bit risky because you're going to get a shot from longer, longer corridor here if someone's on the main stairs or in bathroom or coming through bar. That's a really good one to hold. Another good one to hold is main stairs here. You can hold the main stairs door. You can hold anyone coming down or up main from here as well. Really nice angle. You can also do that from upstairs as well. So you can see you've got the hole here. We just nip upstairs. This is a completely random. I'm going off on a tangent here for a change, but you go upstairs here. You can now hold bottom main from the top floor. So you can hold through two floors as well, and there's plenty of maps where you can do that. Cafe is one, but you can see that was bottom main. That's the door to bottom main there. So another little tip that I just want to mention is something that I guess we'll call map manipulation. Um, we talked about it a little bit on Clubhouse where we went up to the top floor and we looked down onto bottom main through the middle floor. Uh, it's the same here on Cafe, and this is a really good example. Let's just say we want to get an angle onto Freezer Window. We can't. We can see Freezer Window is here, but we can't see into it very far. When it comes to getting angles, don't forget you can destroy more than one wall. We now destroy this wall here, and we go this side, and now look at how much of Freezer Window we can see. We can see almost all the way through Freezer from this side. It's exactly the same the other side as well, so we want to see Freezer Window from this side. Again, you can't see it at all. We open this wall. And now we can see freezer window as well. You know, it'd probably be better if we open up here. And now we can see freezer as well. So just think about that because it's the same on quite a few different maps where you need to open more than one wall to get a good angle onto what you want to see. When it comes to utility that Sledge can destroy, Castle has very kindly set... Castle's got no ankle. Castle has very kindly set us up a couple of examples here down in lobby. He also gets rid of Castle barricades in one hit. Now you'll know nowadays Castle got nerfed slightly or buffed depending on how you look at it. Where a castle barricade now takes nine hits to destroy it by anyone else. Well, one sledge and it's Gonzo. Really, really useful way of getting your castle can be such a oh I've forgotten to do something. Castle can be such a, uh, a suppressive operator if you've not got a sledge because he can soak up so much utility. If you've got an Ash and a Zof, he's got four castle barricades. That's your two impacts from Zephyr and your two uh, Ash charges gone. It's bugging me that Castle's ankle's in the wall. Bear with me a second. I'm just going to uh, talk amongst yourselves. There we go. All right, no problem. Back to where we were. It's a real utility soak if you don't have a sledge because it's going to take... You can only get... You only have three breaching charges. If you're an operator with breaching charges, the Ash and Zof impacts. You know, this, it's a real, real utility soak. The last thing you want to have to do is start putting grenades at the bottom of Castle Barricades. So if I have to sledge, just a one-swing Castle Barricades is so, so strong if you're playing against the Castle. Make sure you utilize the attacker repick. If you see a castle's on the board, I would probably take a sledge 99 times out of 10. Way up! Uh, as many times as you can. Right, when it comes to bulletproofs as well, I'll put one of these up. Most interactions with a bulletproof camera for other people are one uh, one melee on the front of it and you can smash it. The problem with that is that the audio is still captured on the bulletproof. Most uh, operators have got to come to the side here and shoot the gubbins inside. However, the sledge can just one hit the front of it and it's gone though. Um, there's a couple of other things as well. I can't do it with a castle, so we'll just switch over the operators quickly. Sorry, Castle. Right then, Jaeger's very kindly stepped in for this one, and he's put a bit of barbed wire on the floor. It's also a really suppressive thing for attackers. Shoot the radio. A really suppressive bit of utility for attackers to have to get through, and most attackers take two hits to get rid of the barbed wire like this. That's what most attackers are doing. Well, that's what every attacker's doing. Apart from Sledge, who can one-hit the barbed wire. And it's, I always think as well, when it, I mean, I could go back and listen to the clip maybe, but I always think when Sledge hits the barbed wire... It sounds quieter than when you have to melee it twice. Um, but that's maybe that's just me. But yeah, it's a really, really good counter to barbed wire. Just one swing. And it's gone, so thank you, Jaeger. Sorry, Jaeger. Another one for Sledge is Maestro cameras. A bit like the Bulletproofs. Nobody else can destroy the, the Maestro camera. They can just smash it. You can't even shoot the side of a Maestro cam like you can the Bulletproof or below or anything like that. The Bulletproof is completely protected. Uh, sorry, the Maestro camera is completely protected. Uh, whilst the, uh, the the screen on it is closed. However, not when Mr. Sledge turns up, he can just get rid of that Maestro camera off the wall straight away. So just a couple of quick tips and tricks then, especially when it comes to playing vertically, because that's what Sledge is best at, really. Uh, when you're making the vertical holes, don't stand still. So don't make a hole and hold this angle here, because now the defender knows exactly where you are. You've got to sort of run around, make the holes that you want to make as you're going around. Don't stand still, because you're going to get a C4. Make the holes you want to make. Get on your drone, do whatever you need to do, and sort of, you know, don't stand on the holes you've just made straight away. Once you've made three or four or five holes, you can go back and revisit those holes. Don't forget, now there's holes in the floor. 
the audio is stronger below for the attackers so just try and be a bit more careful with the way you're running around if you can ideally get up on something high and hold the angles i'm stuck on something and hold the angles higher up you can see the maestro below there with a bit of with we'd probably still die to a c4 here if the c4 landed here but we're a lot safer than if a c4 lands there or there and we're stood here we're definitely dead whereas if he's there and there and we're stood up on the uh on the counter here we're alive so yeah definitely make the holes don't stand still straight away and don't peek a hole and i think i just said this but i'm gonna say it again just in case don't make a hole and peek you straight away don't make this hole and then peek down obviously you wouldn't just peek at the wall i'm just using that as an example and peek it straight away because the first thing a defender does when he sees a hole above him he goes like this he's looking straight away to see what he can do so make that hole go and make two or three or four more and then go and peek the holes that you need to so just a quick couple of tips to when it comes to grenading below as well. You know, you can make holes in the floor and grenade through the floor. A grenade fits through these beams on every map. However, I did mention this in the up grenading video, which you can go and watch, which I put on a, a couple of weeks ago. You should definitely go and watch that. And every one of my other videos. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, actually, please do go and watch. Uh, we just saw we know the maestro is below, right? So we've got information that maestro is here. What you can do is rather than making a hole above him, is you can throw the grenade onto the floor, then sledge the floor, and the grenade will fall through the floor. Let me show you what I mean. So throw on the floor, sledge the hole so the grenade falls through, and the grenade falls onto Maestro's feet before he even knows what day it is. Hole gets made, drops down below. Works really, really well when you've got information of where defenders are below. So two quick tips to when it comes to dropping hatches then. The first one involving drones, the second one involving sledge himself. First one with drones. Because when you open a hatch like the logistics hatch here on Clubhouse, what you're going to do 99 times out of 10... Wait, oh, we've used that twice in this video now. When it comes to dropping hatches with drones, you're going to open the hatch. You're then going to throw your drone on the floor. You're going to mess around like this, jump the drone down the hatch, and the enemy's going to hear the drone land. However, you can mask the sound of the drone dropping with the sound of the, the hatch opening. Put your drone in the corner of the hatch. Make sure not to sledge your drone, obviously. Sledge this corner of the hatch, and your drone drops in. Now, before the enemy knows what's happening, he's looking up at the hatch going, oh, the hatch has just opened, and your drone's already on the floor looking at what's going on inside. You haven't had to open the hatch, throw your drone down, and then the enemy hears it. It's really helpful for getting quick information. The other hatch tip is exactly the same theory, but with Sledge himself. You can actually stand on the uh, on the hatch as you Sledge it, so you can drop immediately. Just a quick one, by the way. This is one of the only radios I know in the entirety of Siege that doesn't play music. So, a uh, big respect to this radio. Thank you very much. I will not be destroying you, Mr. Radio, with no sound. You're more than welcome to stay there. Unlike our friend around the corner here. Do I take great pleasure in destroying every round? Anyway, better reload that one bullet. I'm in nightmare for that. Anyway, we digress. Quick, quick dropping on hatches is just like this. You stand on the hatch, much like the drone. As you sledge it, you drop. That will also mask the sound of the drop a little bit. How many radios and jukeboxes are there, man? It will also mask the sound of the drop a little bit as well, but it means you can surprise enemies if you've got information below. Absolutely do not do that if you don't know what's below you. Um, but if you know there's an enemy in billiards, for example, and you want to drop quick, you know, quick or drop the hatch and prone, you can be looking in the right area and go for it. But I wouldn't advise doing that if you haven't got information on what's below you. So here's something that not everybody knows. We all know Sledge can play vertically down, but did you know in some circumstances, Sledge can play vertically upwards as well? So all he needs is a little boost so he can get on his tippy toes. We're going to use this pool table here in billiards. And as you can see, there's a hatch above us. There's a few maps and a few lines of sight that you can open by standing up, getting a boost and opening things above you. The same goes if you wanted to open lines of sight on the floor. And all you need to do is find something to stand on so you can make these lines of sight. It's actually really useful in certain places on maps. There's one on coastline. There's this here on uh, on clubhouse. There's actually a radio up here as well. This is outrageous. Can we get it? Yes. Um, so yeah, if someone was like hiding behind the gym equipment in this map, you could start making holes underneath. You know, you can't get right underneath. You can, you know, you're sort of limited to where you can stand. And that isn't one, but you know, you need to play around with it a little bit. But now we've opened the hatch, you can open this line of sight here. Anyone behind the gym equipment there, it's just been naded out. So yeah, there's a few sites and a few places you can do it, and it can be useful at times. So just continuing the theme of sledge playing above, here's the area on coastline. We've got the office um, downstairs here, and the above here is the bar in Aqua. So if we look here, this is the Aqua bar. Let's just say you've got someone playing Aqua bar, and you can't get them out of there. Stand on this desk, go underneath, sledge from below. Now, I wouldn't recommend making two sledge holes, especially once you've made the first one and they know you're below. Just like that, the floor below the apple bar is now, is now open, and no one can play behind there because you can just hold it from below. The other one to think about as well is over in Hookah and Sunrise. I love how fast the rotates are with sledge. 
You can get on here in the sunrise bar and you can start making holes into Hooper above as well. Again, it's not always the most effective thing, and if you were if you were taking Sledge to do this, I wouldn't do this. I would use Buck, because he's much better at playing above vertically. But there's just two more locations where playing upwards with Sledge works as well. So there we have it, that Sledge, a really, really good operator, as I said at the beginning of the video, across all levels of gameplay. I think he's really fun, and he's a really good operator to learn. For those of you that don't know, a stream, I should just record a, just a blanket of me saying this and put it in every video. For those of you that don't know, I stream on Twitch as well, four days a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 p.m. UK time. Be good to see you over there as well. But other than that, that's it for me on this one. I'll see you next time. Cheers.